The concept of the witch wound refers to a deep, often unconscious trauma rooted in historical persecution of those with spiritual, intuitive, or psychic abilities, particularly those identified as women or feminine energies. This wound has persisted across generations and lifetimes, often manifested as a collective burden. Its origins are tied to times when those who exhibited these abilities were targeted, tortured, and even killed simply for embodying qualities considered magical or esoteric by the dominant societal and religious systems. The witch wound is not just about a specific past lifetime or a singular moment of violence. It can also be inherited through ancestral trauma and even linked to experiences that transcend this world, reaching into other realms or dimensions. One of the key aspects of this wound is the suppression of one's natural gifts. People who carry this wound may feel an inner compulsion to hide, deny, or minimize their intuitive powers. These are often the very qualities that the wider society devalues or misunderstands. The wound manifests in many forms, self-doubt, fear of being judged, or a sense of isolation due to one's spiritual or psychic abilities. When these abilities were feared or misunderstood in the past, the resulting harm created an energetic imprint that lingers across time. At its core, the witch wound is tied to the suppression of creativity. Creativity is often viewed as a distinctly feminine energy flowing from a place of multi-dimensional awareness and openness. It is inherently connected to intuition, sensitivity, resilience, vulnerability, and deep inner knowing. Creativity is not just about producing art or innovation. It is a binding force that connects us to the very essence of life and the universe. This creative force, however, has historically been stifled and feared especially in times and cultures where the feminine was subjugated and the divine was primarily understood through a masculine lens. This imbalance began with the societal shift toward viewing power and divinity through a patriarchal framework. Over time, the feminine aspects of creation and spirituality were devalued. The intuition, wisdom, and magical qualities attributed to women or witches were seen as threatening, strange, or even heretical. In a world dominated by patriarchal thinking, these qualities were dismissed as inferior to the strength and logic associated with masculinity. This led to the widespread persecution of women and others who embodied the so-called witchy characteristics, and the trauma created from this persecution has seeped into the collective consciousness. The idea of witch itself has been misunderstood and misrepresented. In its true sense, the word which refers to wisdom, a wisdom that is deeply feminine in nature. The feminine is the space of creation, of knowing beyond what is visible, and the carrier of wisdom that is not just intellectual, but spiritual. It is a direct channel to the divine, not in a patriarchal, authoritarian sense, but as a nurturing, inclusive, and boundless energy. Yet, because of centuries of patriarchal rule, the divine was seen predominantly as masculine, overshadowing the feminine essence that connects us to the world in all its multidimensional complexity. The witch wound then at its deepest level represents the trauma caused by this imbalance in how we perceive the divine. It is not merely about the suffering of individuals who were persecuted for their gifts, but is a reflection of a larger cultural and spiritual distortion. This distortion creates a divide between the wisdom of the feminine and the masculine structures that dominate our systems of belief and power. The witch wound is thus a wound on the collective psyche, particularly for those who identify with or embody the feminine essence, whether through gender, spirit, or energy. Healing the witch wound involves reconnecting with the fullness of our creativity, intuition, and multidimensional abilities. It requires acknowledging the depth of wisdom that resides within, especially the qualities that have been historically suppressed. Embracing one's intuitive powers and recognizing their value is a vital step in healing this wound. 
It also calls for a collective recognition that the feminine aspects of divinity are just as valuable, just as divine, and just as essential to the balance of the universe as their masculine counterparts. Only by fully embracing and integrating both energies can the witch wound be truly healed and transcended. The concept of the witch wound stems from a deep and often unacknowledged trauma related to the suppression of intuition and psychic abilities throughout history. This wound is not just a mental or emotional scar. It is embedded in the very core of a person's being, affecting their connection to their intuition, wisdom, and the magical aspects of life. For many, this manifests as a fear of fully embracing their innate powers, especially when it comes to the non-visible aspects of reality, what some would call the mystical or the magical. At its heart, the witch wound is a result of societal and cultural persecution faced by those, particularly women, who were perceived as too in tune with their inner guidance, too connected to the unseen forces around them. It stems from a long history of suppression and violence against individuals who displayed any form of non-rational knowledge, particularly intuitive or psychic abilities. These abilities are often regarded as magical because they defy the linear, logical frameworks of the material world. Intuition doesn't follow a clear path, nor can it always be neatly explained or justified in intellectual terms. It's not based on concrete data or clear-cut facts, which is why it's often considered mysterious or magical. This nonlinearity is at the very core of what is understood as feminine energy, not necessarily in a gendered sense, but in the sense of a power that cannot be easily defined or controlled. It is an energy that exists beyond the rational, beyond what we can touch, see, or quantify. The feminine principle is inherently tied to intuition, to the ability to know things without explanation, to sense things without the need for empirical evidence. This is the essence of magic, the ability to perceive and act upon knowledge that is not readily available through the senses or conventional reasoning. However, the witch wound is not just an intellectual or spiritual wound. It has a deep physical component. When a person, whether man or woman, carries the burden of persecution for their intuitive gifts, it can manifest in physical forms of suffering. It's often described as a kind of autoimmune response, where the body begins to turn on itself. The trauma of past persecution becomes so ingrained in the cellular memory that it impacts the individual's health and vitality. There's a subconscious belief that if one were to step fully into their powers, whether it be intuition, psychic ability, or other forms of magical knowledge, their body might suffer physical repercussions. It's as though the body itself has learned to suppress these abilities out of fear of experiencing more harm. This deeply ingrained fear of persecution comes from centuries of being punished for stepping outside the boundaries of what society deemed acceptable, particularly for those who dared to express or act upon their intuitive insights. The witch wound, therefore, is not just an emotional or spiritual scar. It is a physical one too, rooted in the trauma of seeing others who exhibited similar traits being hurt, ostracized, or even killed. This ancestral and past life trauma becomes a part of the individual's DNA, passed down through generations, leading to a deep-seated fear that opening up to one's innate powers might lead to personal destruction. The idea of persecution doesn't just apply to past lives or ancestral memories. It also manifests as a form of societal conditioning. Many people today carry the weight of past trauma, even if they don't consciously recognize it. Their fear of being judged, rejected, or harmed for their unique insights or abilities is often so profound that they may unknowingly sabotage their own potential. This could show up in various ways, such as health issues, lack of self-confidence, or even an overwhelming desire to conform to societal norms at the expense of their true selves. It's essential to recognize that the witch wound isn't limited to those who identify as women or who engage in witchcraft in the traditional sense. 
This wound can affect anyone, regardless of gender, who has experienced oppression for their nonlinear, intuitive, or creative abilities. Intuition, in this context, is not a mystical trait reserved for a select few. It's a universal human experience. Everyone has access to some form of psychic or intuitive ability, but the fear of persecution has caused many to repress these gifts or dismiss them altogether. Healing the witch wound involves recognizing and acknowledging the trauma and fear tied to stepping into one's full intuitive and magical potential. It requires an understanding that these abilities are not something to fear, but rather something to embrace and cultivate. Healing is a process of reclaiming one's power, both the internal power of intuition and the external power of being true to oneself, without fear of judgment or persecution. It's a process of breaking free from the shackles of history and stepping into a new paradigm where intuition and magic are celebrated, not suppressed. To truly heal the witch wound, individuals must allow themselves to reconnect with their intuition, not as a dangerous or forbidden power, but as a gift that can guide them toward deeper wisdom and fulfillment. This process often involves facing the physical and emotional scars left by past traumas and finding ways to release the fear that has been stored in the body. It may also involve confronting societal pressures and beliefs that continue to perpetuate the idea that intuition and psychic abilities are abnormal or magical in a negative sense. In this way, healing the witch wound is a journey towards self-empowerment and liberation. Liberation not only from the fear of persecution, but also from the need to conform to societal expectations. It's about reclaiming one's full, authentic self and embracing the magic and wisdom that comes with being truly in tune with the world on an intuitive level. Ultimately, this process allows individuals to step into their full potential, not just as individuals, but as part of a collective that recognizes and honors the power of the non-visible, the non-linear, and the magical aspects of existence. The concept of the witch wound is deeply tied to trauma and persecution. It's not merely about emotional pain or bullying, though those experiences are also valid. It specifically relates to the profound suffering that stems from being targeted because of one's abilities or connection to the unseen realms, whether that's magic, psychic gifts, or intuitive insight. This kind of wound is far more severe than typical forms of bullying or ridicule. It's rooted in a history of physical, emotional, and spiritual torture. People with a witch wound have often endured immense suffering for expressing or embodying their mystical, intuitive, or spiritual nature. The essence of this wound is born from deep, systemic persecution that seeks to silence or destroy these capacities, particularly in women who have historically been the primary targets of this type of trauma. When we delve into the witch wound, it's essential to understand that it is intricately tied to the act of persecution itself. This wound could not exist without that specific kind of oppression. The goal of such persecution was not just to harm, but to eradicate the very existence of intuitive, magical, or spiritual capabilities. The energy that flows through people who possess psychic abilities or mystical wisdom was seen as dangerous, threatening, or unnatural. Whether this persecution took the form of physical torture, execution, or social rejection, it was designed to suppress the expression of what was deemed otherworldly. This wound is not exclusive to any single group or dimension. It transcends time, geography, and even the physical realms we inhabit. It can be seen as part of a larger, universal matrix of trauma, one that affects not only individuals, but also communities, lineages, and even souls across multiple lifetimes. The trauma from past lifetimes or ancestral experiences can remain deeply imprinted within the energetic field, even if we don't consciously recall these events. In the modern age, this imprint often manifests as a sense of disconnection, an unexplained fear of speaking one's truth, or a constant feeling of being misunderstood or silenced. One of the most profound ways this trauma manifests is through autoimmune disorders, 
particularly those affecting the thyroid. The thyroid, located in the throat region, is intricately connected to our ability to express ourselves, communicate our truths, and connect with the higher realms. This energy center, often referred to as the throat chakra, serves as a portal for our inner and outer worlds to meet. It's through this portal that we speak our truths, share our wisdom, and express our intuition. When this energy center is under attack, whether through literal or metaphorical persecution, it can result in various forms of illness, most notably thyroid issues and autoimmune diseases. The throat center is much more than just the physical area of the body. It is a spiritual gateway, a bridge between the unseen and the seen. It allows us to bring forth wisdom from higher dimensions, to articulate spiritual knowledge, and to anchor the unseen into the physical world. When individuals with the witch wound experience persecution for their mystical or intuitive gifts, the throat becomes the primary target of this oppression. The vibration of their voice, the very tool through which they could express their divine connection, is attacked. This attack can leave lasting scars, which manifest in the body as various ailments, particularly thyroid conditions. In the modern age, this deeper metaphysical trauma is being healed on a collective level, as we enter an era of spiritual awakening and healing. However, for many, the witch wound continues to be an active part of their energetic field. It's not always an obvious or conscious wound, but its effects are felt through patterns of illness, self-silencing, and difficulty in speaking one's truth. The way this wound shows up can vary, but it's often linked to a deeper story of suppression, whether through physical pain, social rejection, or internalized shame. Understanding this wound is crucial for healing, as it allows individuals to reconnect with their voice, reclaim their spiritual power, and ultimately heal the deeper trauma that has been carried through lifetimes. The concept of the witch wound is deeply tied to the fear of expressing one's truth. This fear originates from a traumatic history where speaking out led to severe consequences. The core of this wound lies in the act of speaking. Once a person used their voice and suffered physically, emotionally, or even spiritually due to that very expression, they began to internalize that speaking out is dangerous. It's not merely about speaking the truth, but about the fear that arose from the consequences of speaking in past lifetimes or experiences. The fear becomes ingrained in the energy field and the body, creating a block in the throat center, which is where communication and truth expression originate. The witch wound manifests primarily through this shutdown of the throat center. The body and mind begin to recoil at the idea of speaking out or expressing oneself, as it brings up memories of past traumas linked to voicing one's truth. This energy pattern plays out physically, as the body holds onto the trauma associated with speaking. Over time, this can create a deep-seated fear that limits one's ability to communicate openly or assertively. The impact of this wound isn't confined to just the emotional or mental realm. It affects the physical body as well, particularly in the form of illnesses related to the throat, such as thyroid disorders. These conditions are not just random. They are often symbolic of a deeper spiritual wound that is carried in the energy field. One of the most common physical manifestations of this wound is autoimmune diseases, especially those affecting the thyroid like Hashimoto's disease. These conditions are more common in women, as they are often associated with feminine energy and the suppression of that energy. However, it's important to note that men can also carry these wounds. The rise in autoimmune conditions among men may not be as widely reported or understood, partly due to the stigma surrounding men and their health especially when it comes to conditions that are typically seen as more associated with women. The lack of adequate statistics or research on autoimmune diseases in men often means that the full scope of the issue isn't as visible or understood. However, these physical manifestations, while significant, are only one layer of the problem. At a deeper, more universal level, the witch wound is linked to a larger collective trauma. 
This trauma arises from an age-old battle between forces that seek to dominate and oppress the feminine aspect of consciousness. The suppression of the feminine energy, the aspect of consciousness that embodies intuition, compassion, and sovereignty, is essential for maintaining control over individuals and societies. In this view, the witch wound is a direct result of an overarching pattern of trying to diminish feminine power, which in turn stifles the ability for individuals to truly awaken and step into their sovereignty. The witch wound's impact goes beyond personal trauma. It reflects a collective unconscious where deep-seated archetypal wounds are carried through generations. These archetypal wounds include feelings of persecution, bitterness, shame, and misunderstanding. These are not isolated events, but are part of a larger, universal theme of suppression. The energy behind these wounds is shared by many people across time and space, as they carry the imprint of a time when the feminine was brutally oppressed and silenced. When individuals carry this which wound, it can affect them on multiple levels. Beyond the throat center, another key area of the body and energy field that is impacted is the willpower. The willpower is what enables a person to stand in their own power, to be seen, and to be visible in the world. However, when the witch wound is active, this ability to be visible can be stifled. The person may feel the need to hide or remain in the shadows, fearing that visibility will bring danger or punishment. This dynamic plays out as a deep-seated fear of exposure and recognition, as the individual is conditioned to believe that standing out or being seen will only bring harm. This fear of visibility often becomes so overwhelming that the individual may even sabotage their own opportunities for recognition or success, subconsciously keeping themselves in the background. The witch wound thus stifles, not just the voice, but the ability to shine and be fully visible in the world. The person may live with the belief that it is safer to remain unseen, rather than face the potential violence or judgment that comes with stepping into the light. At the core of this wounding is a complex relationship between power and vulnerability. The witch wound creates a profound sense of vulnerability not just in the physical sense, but in the emotional and spiritual realms as well. To heal this wound requires a deep process of reclaiming the power of the voice and the ability to be visible. It means working through the fear that has been instilled by past traumas and reclaiming the sovereignty that was once suppressed. Healing involves reconnecting with the throat center and the willpower center, acknowledging the pain, and gently moving through the layers of repression and fear to reawaken one's authentic self. Many of us carry the imprint of a deeply ingrained fear of being visible, of standing in our truth. This fear often traces its roots to the so-called witch wound, an energetic imprint stemming from past lives or experiences where speaking up or simply being seen led to persecution. This wound, tied to an ancient pattern of silencing those who spoke truth or lived openly, manifests as an intense desire to remain invisible, to avoid standing out or attracting attention. At its core, the witch wound is linked to the willpower, the second energy center within the body. This center governs our ability to take action, make choices, and assert ourselves in the world. When the witch wound is active, it undermines this very power. We become disconnected from our ability to make clear, empowered decisions, and our energy becomes trapped in a cycle of avoidance. We may find ourselves shrinking back, unable to take the steps we know we need to take, paralyzed by the fear of being visible or exposed. This suppression of our will and our visibility impacts our deeper sense of purpose. It stunts our ability to align with our dharma, our soul's mission. If we cannot express ourselves fully, we are unable to live in alignment with what we are here to do. When we try to hide or silence our truth, we lose touch with the deeper meaning and fulfillment that can only come when we are fully expressing who we are. Even if our truth seems strange, unconventional, or misaligned with the norms of society, 
It is only through expression that we can begin to heal and integrate those aspects of ourselves. The key to healing this wound lies in embracing imperfection. Healing does not mean instant clarity or flawless expression. It means allowing ourselves to be seen, even when the process feels messy and raw. It's about giving ourselves permission to express our truth, no matter how uncomfortable that might feel, without the expectation that everything will be perfect or smooth. The journey of healing the witch wound is one of learning to navigate vulnerability, to allow ourselves to be seen in our full human complexity. The key to this process is self-compassion. If we want to heal the witch wound, we must first offer ourselves grace. We need to create a safe inner space where we can express our truth, even when it's messy, unpolished, and imperfect. It's important to let go of the expectation that we must show up as flawless, especially if we have a history of hiding or suppressing our voice. Healing can be uncomfortable, and it may not always look pretty, but the key is to start where we are and to honor the journey, however imperfect it may seem. In this process of healing, it's essential to recognize that our journey is not about seeking validation or approval from others. The Witch Wound is about reclaiming our power to be seen, to stand in our truth regardless of how others may react. It's about the willingness to risk exposure, to risk persecution, knowing that this is part of the healing process. When we shy away from the possibility of being judged or criticized, we continue to feed the wound. Only by stepping into the discomfort of being visible and speaking our truth can we begin to heal the distortions that have kept us small. There is a paradox in healing the witch wound. Often the very thing that we fear the most, the experience of persecution, is the catalyst that helps us heal. This doesn't mean we need to actively seek out persecution. But it does mean that if we are drawn into situations where we feel persecuted or misunderstood, these can be the very experiences that allow us to integrate and heal the wound. By experiencing a lesser degree of persecution, we get the opportunity to stand in our power and not collapse under the weight of judgment. In psychological terms, this might be understood as a disconfirming experience, a situation where the original pain of the wound is reactivated, but this time we have the opportunity to respond differently. We can choose to stand strong, to remain visible, and to speak our truth in a way we couldn't before. It's an opportunity for growth and transformation, where the person who once shrank back from persecution now stands in their power fully present and undeterred by judgment. This healing process is not linear or easy. It's messy and often uncomfortable. But through this process of visibility and expression, we allow ourselves to heal the witch wound, to transform it from a source of pain into a source of empowerment. We reclaim our right to be seen, to speak, and to express our truth. In doing so, we step into a new phase of our soul's journey, one where we no longer shrink in fear, but embrace the fullness of who we are. This healing ultimately leads to the maturation of our soul's path, where we are free to follow our purpose without fear of persecution or rejection. In the end, the witch wound can only be truly healed by fully experiencing what it once feared, persecution and judgment but now from a place of empowerment. It is no longer about avoiding discomfort, but about allowing ourselves to fully engage with it, knowing that through this process, we are forging a new path of freedom, visibility, and truth. Through this journey, we no longer hide or suppress our gifts. Instead, we allow them to shine and to take their rightful place in the world. And it is through this process of courageous expression that we move closer to fulfilling our true purpose. Healing the deep-rooted wounds of persecution and the dynamics of power structures can be a transformative and profound journey. When one experiences the same trauma or hardship, but this time with a different outcome, the process of healing begins. This shift is known as a disconfirming experience. To put it simply, when a person finds themselves in a similar environment or situation that once triggered their trauma, but this time they emerge with a new result, 
the cycle of that wound is broken. This new, contrasting outcome signifies a departure from the old patterns, where the same external circumstances no longer lead to the same internal response. This is what ultimately leads to the healing and transmutation of wounds like the witch wound. The witch wound is not just about personal suffering. It can be a collective and intergenerational trauma that manifests in many different forms, often linked to societal power dynamics. In the context of this wound, there is an internalized struggle where one person, in their effort to survive, may begin to police or control others, even those who are in a similar or worse situation. This creates an invisible but powerful form of oppression. It is no longer just about competition for tangible resources, like food or land, but instead it takes the shape of deeper, more subtle forms of control. At its core, the witch wound involves a deep fear and mistrust, not only of external authorities, but also of others who might share similar struggles. This can lead to a toxic environment where people, instead of supporting one another in their shared hardships, turn on each other. In some cases, individuals may even seek to appease the systems of control by offering others up as a form of sacrificial offering. This dynamic, rooted in self-preservation at the expense of others, is perhaps one of the most harmful aspects of this wound. It's not only tragic, but also incredibly difficult to overcome because it perpetuates a cycle of fear and distrust among those who should be allies. One of the keys to healing this deep wound lies in transforming the way we experience and interact with the trauma. The idea of disconfirming experiences offers hope. If a person can re-enter the environment or situation that once triggered their trauma, but this time experience something different, whether it be a different response from others, a shift in their own reaction, or a new way of perceiving the situation, it marks the beginning of healing. These experiences show that it is possible to create a new reality even within the same external circumstances. Healing the witch wound is not just about individual growth, but also about collective transformation. It requires a deep understanding of how power structures function, not just externally in society, but also internally within individuals. These structures often perpetuate the very cycles of oppression that keep the wound alive. However, by consciously choosing to disconfirm the old patterns and opting for new ways of being in the world, healing becomes possible. The concept of the quantum field can be an illuminating framework for understanding this type of healing. In ancient Celtic traditions, the word weird referred to the loom of fate, a metaphor for the weaving of personal destiny. This weird was a symbolic representation of the forces at work in the quantum field, the mysterious non-linear realm where potential and possibility exist in abundance. Much like the workings of fate, the quantum field is not something that can be easily defined or controlled. It is fluid, unpredictable, and open to infinite possibilities. The feminine energy, often associated with the quantum field, is deeply connected to this non-linear potential. It is an energy that doesn't follow a predictable, logical path, but instead moves in ways that can feel mysterious or even strange to the rational mind. This type of energy, while difficult to comprehend in a linear sense, holds immense transformative power. It is this very power that holds the potential to heal deep wounds, like the witch wound, by opening up new ways of seeing and experiencing reality. When we talk about healing through the quantum field, we are talking about accessing a space of pure potential, an energetic realm where the rules of linear time and space do not apply. In this space, it is possible to rewrite the outcomes of past traumas. By tapping into this non-linear energy, individuals can heal and release old patterns, creating new pathways for themselves and their communities. This process requires a deep willingness to embrace the unknown and the mysterious aspects of life. It calls for a shift in perspective, where one begins to trust in the unfolding of life even when it doesn't make sense according to the rules of conventional logic. 
This is the power of the feminine energy at work, a force that, when harnessed, can heal not only individual wounds, but also the collective wounds of society. Healing the witch wound, then, is a deeply personal and collective journey. It involves confronting the shadows of the past, understanding the dynamics of power and oppression, and choosing to create new experiences that disconfirm old, limiting beliefs. By doing so, we step into a new reality, one where the old wounds no longer dictate our experiences and where the energy of pure potential guides us toward healing and transformation. In conclusion, the journey of healing the witch wound is one that requires courage, a deep connection to the mysteries of life, and an openness to new experiences that defy the old patterns of trauma. By engaging with the quantum field of potential and embracing the nonlinear nature of feminine energy, it is possible to transform the old wounds of persecution into sources of power, wisdom, and collective healing.